over here on the Windows page, it talks about, right, so the instructions read, you want to list between three and five projects, right, and tells you how to determine relevant projects. Then if you were to look at the example that I've provided here for you, where are you at? I got a lot of screens up. Okay, if you were to look at this sample, right, at the top we list, we know we have our letterhead, right? And, I'll, and what I'll do, I'm going to start off by showing you the template that I gave you, and then we're going to show you how today, like that was 2013, because I was doing this in 2013, um, but we're going to show you fast forward till 2019, 2020, we're using the same template, just different names. So again, it's a template, right? Which tells you what they were doing, source of thoughts back then. So again, here is one I respond to for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, District Little Rock, Arkansas. Please, please, please use the template. Okay, you feel free to change it, but use the template. Give them at least what they're asking for. All right, so we've got our dates, we've got who's attention to, we've got our reference. Fair enough, right? But we got those things. That's easy for most people. We get that. All right, I'm gonna go back between this browser and the other one. All right, so again, we've got, here's our title, we've got a notice ID, we know who we're making out to, NAVFAC command, all right. Because again, you know, and, it's, and, I, and I would agree with everyone, here it doesn't tell you what to submit. So I understand when people say, well, Eric, I don't know what to submit because it doesn't tell you a format. Right, it, there's nowhere on here where it says format. It just says give me this information, so I can understand why you know naturally people would be confused. That's why we're doing this for you. So here it is. Here's a format. Here's your reference document to who make a concern. Your company, a little bit of history about your company goes in here. Right, the blurb goes in there, and then ours it says submittal requirements. So on ours, what happens is, and we'll give you some different examples. We say we have a team that has experience, da da da, and then we listed our company profile. So how many employees, office locations? Now, this particular opportunity, it does not ask you to list that, so that's not a requirement. All right. So on this particular opportunity, it does not ask you to list anything about your employees. However, hold on, I just read something. Where is it at? Okay, here in this paragraph, is my big head in the way? No. All right, in this paragraph, it says, if the requirement is advertised as small business, you must perform at least 15% of the cost of the contract, including, not including the materials uh, with your own employees. So in that regard, it may be advantageous, again, depending on how strong you are, to list this, but it's not a requirement. Here we list our office location, our single bonding capacity, aggregate bonding capacity, DUNS number, cage code. Always put your DUNS number, cage code on everything. Why did we put our bonding capacity? Because going back to this page, they talked about doing projects that were the magnitude, right? It says here, demonstrate your capacity for bonding 100 to 250 million. Obviously, we would be eh, eh, on this one. Responsible office. All right, small business designation. So again, going back over to the full page, it says at the top, right? Oh, no, 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 yep. If you are small disadvantaged business, service disabled, hub zone, etc. So we check that box, okay, here. And then it talks about, we mentioned our responsible office and a contact person. I was a contact person at the time. And then now we get into relevant experience, right? So... If we go back over here, what it mentioned was the source of side information was used to document three and up to five relevant projects. Are we starting to see how this makes sense? Relevant experience, relevant projects. Okay. And then it tells you, it defines what relevant is. So in your write-up, you want to make sure that here you're outlining contract value, right? That's why we outline contract value. We got a lot of point of contact, and we, we do a little bit about the scope. Why? Because going back to over here, it says 
scope and complexity. All right, your scope and complexity, you shall demonstrate the following items. New projects. If your project submitted only include horizontal work, then you will not be considered. So when you're over here and you're writing in terms of your scope, you've got to make sure that you include vertical construction. Right? So under my scope, I would write, you know, design and erect 17 metal aircraft sunshade structures, a fully electrical overhead and bay lights. Even though it says erect, where does it talk about vertical construction? I would make sure to explicitly state vertical construction under this particular project. And then I list my relevant experience, right? And then we went out, we listed some relevant experience. And in our case, we listed what? Let me see. How many did we give? We gave one, two, three. I think we gave like seven. But on this particular, oops, sorry, guys. On this particular requirement, it says list no more than five. So I would do what they said and list no more than five. All right. Now, there is a contract information form and a project information form. Make sure you fill that out. I'm just talking about if it did not have any additional forms of documents, then this is what I would submit. And that's just literally based on the letter sample template. Now, let me pull up this contract forms and see what they discuss. Hopefully, it comes up on my other screen. Doesn't look like it. Okay, I'm going to pull this up on another browser for you so you guys can see it. Give me a second. Hold on. I don't know why it's not showing me Microsoft Word. What I'm looking at, and let me see if I can, if I can pull it up for you. Okay, and this particular example, what they did was they actually provided a document to submit with it. So in this example, they provided a document to submit that outlines all these things. I think because it's so big that they did this. However, this is not always typical, and that's why we're having a conversation today to show you that not they, they're not always typical forms. This one, in this particular case, they provided the actual document for you to submit. So you would submit in this document and submit it along with the cover sheet that basically outlined the other things that we talked about. But if you look at this document, this document mirrors all of the information that I had on the actual word sheet. So here it talks about, it gives you just boxes to fill out all the things that we've already discussed, as you can see here. So if you go back to our original you know, Word document, I mean our PDF, that sample, everything that they're talking about is basically listed there. So nothing new, just a different format for giving, asking for the same information. Click the join button now to find out about all of the different membership options. You can start off as a fan supporter and move your way all the way up to a GovCon insider.